the real awakening. Our new favorite hobby quickly became sitting on the back porch and watching the hummingbirds. We didn't even plug in the TV, the tail light vision, for almost six months. We dug and set a concrete pad to erect a steel shed for storage. We collected twisted lumber from the hardware store to rig together a pretty impressive chicken coop. We're currently digging a French drain to reduce the water that collects under the house. We're going to be making garden boxes from cedar first cuts. We have way more chickens than planned and more on the way. Then hopefully sheep sometime later this year. It's amazing how life can change just by following the laws and commandments God gave us in the Bible. The blessings I've received from learning about my Lord and Savior Jesus have been innumerable. We have found a community we belong in, and the people we are meeting treat us more like family than my own family ever did. I love it here, to say the least. I wish we would have moved here 18 years ago. I was at that second job, grinding away for the beast system, and I just got off the phone with my wife. We were discussing finances, and I just talked about how we were going to have to skip most of the groceries that week and dive into the food storage, because the bills were more than we'd been expecting. I was milling internally for a good minute, mentally trying to figure out how to make enough to feed my family that week. In a place that was strange to me, with no other recorded skill than holding a steering wheel, this was about a month after starting this new job. I still had no faith in a higher power to help me. It was me against the world still. This guy I'm going to call Chad comes around the corner a few minutes later and asks how I spell my name, then proceeds to hand me a check. It was the exact amount my wife and I had just talked about needing for the bills and groceries for the week. My first thought was, how did he hear me talking? I was in a closed car, and it was running, and I wasn't talking loud. Who is it around here that heard me say we needed help? No, 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 I can't take this. I don't I don't need this here. No, thanks, but, but no. I said with confusion, humiliation, and unease. I don't take handouts. I tried that once. I almost got stuck in a cult. This isn't from me. It's from him, he replied, as he pointed up. Him who? I said. God, the Heavenly Father, and my Lord and Savior Jesus. He said to give this to you, and I won't take no for an answer, was his response. Chad's a big dude. He would have fit right in with us in the club. He wasn't taking no for an answer. He, like a lot of us, has his own past. He's confided in me about it, and it'll stay there. I love this man like a brother as well. He's taught me so much, and I owe him more than I can ever repay. He and his family have been a big part in this season of our life. I still can't read this out loud without crying. <laughs> I've cried more in the last year than I think I have in my whole life to this point. I know I'm going to cry more. I cried writing these pages. These pages that just a few months ago started out as just a few thoughts and have become my life story in a nutshell. As you can imagine, my world started changing. My attitude toward life started changing. I started thinking about my past more and the mistakes I've made through life and what they've caused me to suffer from. I started needing answers, and since my dad was at a dead end, I kept searching. This time, I reached out to my mother. I wanted answers. I'd heard my dad's story for years, and I'm finally mature enough to truly understand that there are two sides to every story. I sent her a long letter as well, and after having to search to contact her after the letter was written, like I said earlier, I have had zero contact with this woman for almost 13 years, so much so that I avoided her like a plague at my brother's wedding, so much so that he agreed that I didn't even have to be in pictures with her. The way she acted at my wedding was nothing to the cold shoulder I gave her at my brother's. I feel like this will give a good explanation of what my relationship with her has been and where I'm at with her now. I apologize for some wording, but again, I was in a different place in life. This is the letter I wrote to her. Lynn, hi. This isn't easy for me to say out loud, so I put it in writing for now. I've been going back and forth about how to go about this chapter of my journey. I have a lot of unanswered questions. 
mostly due to my immaturity and ignorance over my years. The last time we talked, 14 years ago, I was trying to arrange with you to get you to come visit your grandsons. Your response was you wanted to just have a digital relationship with my boys. For some reason, you were so unwilling to come visit, even when I offered to cover all financials for the trip. All I was trying to do was allow my boys to have a relationship with their grandmother. When my three-year-old's eyes welled up with tears after telling him his grandma only wanted to have a digital type relationship and the understanding that he came to broke me. At three years old, this wise little man's only response was, but I thought grandmas were supposed to come give you hugs. That fucking broke me. So to protect my children, I cut you out. I don't regret that. I've been hurt like that my whole life by everyone I've been around. And as I learned about it, I put up a lot of walls. I had to in order to survive. Some due to adult stupidity, but mostly from traumas I remember as a child. And I'm not describing traumas as in the modern blue-haired Margie liberal definition in the media, but the actual dictionary definition. Noun, a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. Quote, a personal trauma like the death of a child. Medicine definition. Physical injury, rupture of the diaphragm caused by blunt trauma. Both definitions have been caused by Dan and yourself. Also, I've discovered a lot came from his mother and your parents as well, which either of these last should have never happened. What I do regret now is not hearing you out. The last time I heard your voice was in a voicemail. You said you had more to tell me that I wasn't told or didn't know. I'm ready to hear you out. If you're willing to still tell me, I will understand if you don't. I know I've grown from who I was back then, but I'm learning I need more answers to fully heal. I can't promise my feelings will change much, but I feel I need to at least hear your side. Whatever you have wanted to say or feel the need to get off your chest, I'd like to give you the opportunity to tell me what you wanted to say. I can't promise a conversation of any length. I can tell you that I will still protect my children to the end, so please don't ask about them. And if I refuse to answer a question you have that involves them, don't take offense. I need you to know that just because I've made it to this point in my self-recovery, that I'm not sure if I'm even ready or willing to try and patch together any sort of relationship with you, or of any relationship between you and my boys. But I'm at least ready to hear you out and let you speak your piece. I know part of healing is knowing both sides of a situation to its fullest extent, so I'm inviting you not just to tell me what you want me to hear, Lynn, but I'm inviting myself to open up to a lot of personal hurt and psychological warfare again. 38 years is a long time to deal with the shit I've gone through, not of my own fault completely. I do have my faults, but we're only products of our upbringing. I have a lot I want to say fingers I want to point, screams of pain that are waiting to be released. I'm sure at some point in this letter, or if you choose to conversate with me, you'll think I need to see a mental health professional. I can't. I won't. I can't trust them. And sadly, you were the one that proved that to me. Even though it was legally acceptable for Jonathan to disclose any and all information to you, that therapist experience solidified the lesson that taught me that I can't trust anyone. That lesson has followed me through life quite well and has benefited me greatly. But I never thank you for that lesson. Thank you, sincerely, I think. Because that lesson destroyed a few relationships I've had. Trust. For such a little word, it has a huge impact on someone's life. Trust. Such a dumb, useless word. Defined as a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something, relationships have to be built on trust. End quote. It can change everything about someone or something. Relationships have to be built on that word. Trust. Reliability. That's another thing I've learned. I've only been able to rely on myself. A child should be able to rely on its family unit for support, love, and acceptance. And you know as well as I, our family never had that. Therefore, trust could never be built. 
in truth. That word makes me laugh still to this day. When someone says they're telling me the truth, I laugh. I've been programmed from a child to know that truth doesn't exist as well, at least not in our family. And sadly, we're all products of our upbringing. My whole existence has been a lie. Two conflicting stories have been told to me for decades. Being a parent myself, I swore to my sons I would never lie to them. I would always tell them the truth, no matter how painful it would be to hear, no matter how much pain it could cause me or them. I've never lied to my children. The truth does hurt sometimes, but sometimes that hurt is needed to heal and grow, and I've been denied that truth for too long. At this point, I want to ask something of you. If you decide to call and have this conversation, I don't care how bad it hurts, me or you, but I want the fucking truth. 100% unadulterated truth. Raw, ugly, and whole. Tell me everything. Get it all out. From the day you met Dan until now, whatever question I ask, whatever words come out of your mouth, I need 100% truth. I also have no interest in knowing your husband's opinion of Jack's shit. He needs to stay completely out of this conversation. He wasn't there. It's not his fucking business, and his opinion is not welcome in the matter. I'm too old, and so are you, to continue life-filtering bullshit from the past. 1 Corinthians 13.4 reads, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Lynn, I have an amazing wife that has shown me so much true love. The sad thing is, it took me almost 18 years to figure out what the word love meant as well. Love has been so fucking twisted in my eyes because of what I witnessed it being called as a child. I need you to truly open yourself to this word as well, if we speak. I'm asking that you don't envy my relationship with Dan. Don't boast anything. I don't know where it will come up, but anyone and everyone sees themselves as better than someone for one reason or another. Leave that out of this conversation, please. It is not arrogant or rude. I need peace, and I feel you may as well. But please don't bring arrogance into this either. Please keep that in mind. There is some I may tell you about the last 14 years, but I don't know if I'll be able to form the words yet. I'll be honest. I still cringe at the thought of hearing your voice again. I shudder when I think about having to talk to you in order to allow myself to heal. Because of the way our last conversation went, and the trauma caused by your hand in my past, because of the way you made my child feel, because of the manipulation that took place during your divorce, I know why I feel like I do, and that's for me to figure out how to fix. But I need answers to do so. <laughs> I have some very crystal clear memories, but those are mine to know for now. I'm not going to tell you what I remember if we talk, but I need answers. I don't know what those answers will be, and this is where I'm asking for your grace in the matter. Again, don't expect any sort of relationship to come of this. That's for me to decide. If and when I'm ready, I just need answers to my questions. Some questions I know, and I've written in preparation, but I'm sure there'll be others I don't. Again, grant me the patience and time to heal in my own way, but give me the answers to allow me to do that. Lynn, a lot has changed for me in the last few years. Some good, some bad. But the one thing that's never changed is the fact that my parents, yes, plural, have been lying for fucking years to their children. Just please be honest. Being lied to by almost everyone you've ever encountered in life really gives you a massive bullshit detector. That's one of the reasons my circle is so very small. So please give me this respect of full truth in this. I'm a big boy now. I'll handle it just fine. I just need answers. If you'd like to talk... I'd like to extend a digital discussion through a video chat app or something of the sort, if that's what you'd like. I've been going back and forth about how to reach out, and the only conclusion that I'm allowed is being able to still have my walls I can put back up if needed. 
I've unblocked you for the time being so that you can message or call, video or voice, using social media. I'll let you decide. But that's as much wall as I can afford to drop for now. My children and wife are and will be off limits for you to contact until I decide. But I need answers. I hope you understand. And I'm ready to hear you when you're ready to talk truths. I've texted her a handful of times since we talked a few months ago. She told me a few stories of my childhood that I didn't remember. One story was that I had an imaginary friend. She said uh, she didn't say at what age, but that his name was Janer, and his dad drove a truck over the hill. Ironic? Uh, so I would assume it was between four and six years old, based on the geography of the area she described that hill being. I also finally gave her the chance to tell her side of the story about the divorce. Interestingly enough, most, not all, of her perspective matched what my dad told me my whole life. She was blown away at the detail I was able to recall to her of what I did remember. What Dan did not tell me, but she did, were the details of his fault in the story. He never said why my mom threw him out. She told me. He had mentioned how attractive he thought one of the teenage boys that lived down the road was. She'd had enough of his homosexual pedophilia, and that's why she kicked him out. I don't blame her. In fact, that gave me the motivation and solidification to start the business that I'm currently pursuing. I want to bring awareness to all of the pedophiles and predators of this world that we are watching you. I want to embolden the public to stand up to the elite, or what I now call the predator class, and tell them that we are tired of our children being trafficked for their pleasure. I'm tired of hearing stories of the abuse children suffer at the hands of these monsters. I'm so very thankful that Dan never touched my brother or myself, to the best of my recollection. But I'll be damned if I don't stand up, like God the Father has commanded us to, and speak out against the evil in this world. I'm going to be salty for the rest of my life. Jesus said I could be. The truth hurts, and I should be the first to admit it. Hard truths hurt even more, but they need to be said. In fact, so much so that we decided to name our company just that. Hard truths hurt. Check us out and say hi. In fact, we're going to donate 10% of all of our sales in 2024 to the Caleb House Foundation to help battle human trafficking and the after effects it has on the children that are taken into it against their will. Every year, we'll be finding another credible organization to donate our tithe to from this business to help where we are able to end human trafficking. I thought about reaching out to my mom more than a few times. I have, but I also know a phone works both ways. And even though I have open communication with her, she doesn't reach out much. My youngest son, at three years old, said grandmas are supposed to come hug you and give you love. And he's 100% right. I remember the love and hugs from both of my grandmothers, and he's not wrong. He has yet to meet her face-to-face -face officially, but he has invited her to his high school graduation, so we'll see. I don't have high hopes of her showing. She did send a gift card, which wasn't expected at all, and had a nice text conversation with my son after graduation, too. I don't foresee much of this relationship coming off of this, but the gesture meant a lot to him for sure. But for me and my status with her, message received.